Uh, Kim, I think all the uh, panelists are online. Okay, uh, great. I, I just remind, remind everybody, uh, do not unmute yourself. Uh, just keep it, uh, don't mute yourself and uh, just keep it on. Okay, and, and you have the um, people in the meeting now, everyone's? I think, yeah, they're, they're uh, gradually joined in now, I think. Okay. And so um, we just want to start with sort of an overview and then um, I'm just going to introduce myself. So I'm Kim O'Shaughnessy. I am going to moderate for tonight just to sort of keep things moving along. Um, I teach at St. Andrews Episcopal School and I have been three years involved with FIRST um, through with FTC, FLL and FLL Junior. And um, I think that it makes sense to have the panelists introduce themselves really quickly. So why don't we run through? Um, I don't know if your order is the same as mine. Dwight, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I, I'll be happy to. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I, uh, it warms my heart that uh, while the, the social distancing is to fight the COVID-19 uh, prevent us from seeing in person, um, but the technology and, and our share, share the love and science and technology bring us together. And on, on behalf of uh, Omar Robotics, uh, I, I wanna thank all the panelists for coming together in the short notice and spend uh, time to prepare for this workshop. And I also wanna uh, thank uh, everybody today to join us. And uh, my name is uh, Dawei Lin. Uh, I have been coaching and also judging for FL and FTC uh, for a couple of years at the, the local state qualifiers and also at the world, world championship. And uh, I enjoy um, learning from young people and also inspired by them. Uh, and also get extra uh, respect, respect when I put when this, I, um, this the judge uh, shirt on. Awesome. Jeff, do you want to introduce, introduce yourself? Sure. We've sure. got some echo going on, don't we? So uh, I'm Jeff Myers. This is my 11th year in volunteering for FIRST. Um, my third year in, in uh, judge advising for FTC. Uh, I've done judging at FLL and FTC levels. I've done a variety of things at FRC levels. I'm on the board of directors for the Maryland Robotics Alliance, which is mainly involved with FRC. Both of my um, sons are um, off my payroll now, but they're both FRC alumni. And um, it was their FRC experience that led them to the careers they have now and, and um, motivated me to volunteer for the organization and keep giving back. Professionally, I'm staff for the Howard County Council. I'm not a technical person, but here I am. Sounds good. Jocelyn, I don't see your picture, but I bet you're there. Would you introduce yourself? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. There you uh. oh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I'm, my name is Jocelyn Davey, and uh, I've been involved with robotics for probably the past 13 years, then robotics, and then I've been uh, mentoring uh, Tuesdays for seven years. And uh, I am a special education teacher, and I have my master's in reading, and I work privately uh, doing reading tutoring for children with speech and language with dyslexia learning problems. Awesome. And uh, yeah, for Cubics, I'm the outreach mentor. So I connect with a lot of local companies. Um, I enjoy finding out from the kids what they're interested and passionate with. Then I kind of do some research and find companies that maybe can give them some background on careers that they might be interested in. Great. Jeff, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, Jeff Chiputra. Uh, I'm one of the other two senior judge advisor for Maryland DC FTC. Okay. Uh, I've been involved at first for over 15 years. I've actually been involved with FTC since the beginning of the program, not just in Maryland, but uh, from first head headquarters. Uh, some of you may remember when we first called first Facts Challenge. 
uh, that's uh, I was uh, started back then. So glad to, to be here. Thank you for everybody for for joining us tonight. Great, Arlene. Would you introduce? Hi, Arlene Lance. So I'm excited to be on here with all of you this evening, and uh, and I have a pleasure of working with First Lego League for about 15 years, and uh, with the G Force uh, Team 2018 for the past 12 years. So uh, remember when our first season when Jeff had it going down in Southern Maryland. So those were some some good times. So I've enjoyed doing it and glad to be here this evening. That's wonderful. And Inga, will you uh, wrap us up with introductions? Sure. Um, I'm Inga Alamon and I was a first Lego league coach for about four years. And then um, my team kind of moved on to first tech challenge. So then I just became a first tech challenge mom and helped Arlene out and um, just helped out a lot with judging and with the team. And that's pretty much it. Sounds great. Well, it's actually such a pleasure to be in all of your company because I'm still only three years into this. And uh, I said, there's, there's no such learning as learning with FIRST because you, you learn at such an incredible pace. Um, so I'm just looking at the questions that are, have already been asked and um, looking so maybe, at- uh, uh, Kim, I think maybe just let me give a little- um, Yes. Uh, a little logistic things I think we right. talked about, and it's, it's a new technology that we, we also this first time experienced this. Great. So um, because we have a large number of people join us and uh, we cannot um, take questions in the chat box. And uh, so um, we do put in a Slido link. Uh, people can just click that link and then, um, and then they will um, be able to see uh, they can you can post your question that way and uh and the good thing is that you also can rank the question that you like and so we will probably display that um display that that uh the question later but before that i just want to uh, give a very quick overview of to tonight what we're doing uh basically we talk about judging uh in other words you know how the awards uh are decided uh because there were some uh, uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, when they sign up is from FLL, so they may not know FTC yet. Uh, I would just, uh, for the benefit for them, I would just kind of briefly mention that. And, uh, and then judging is a subjective process, as, as everybody knows. So if you don't win an award, uh, you can always blame judges. <laughs> and, and since the, uh, the FTC actually does not allow um, judges to give feedback to teams uh, because they want them to learn the self-reflection. So it's so tonight is, is very special. Uh, so we, uh, but we follow the um, the first guideline. We'll not give the feedbacks for specific teams. It's more like a general feedback for the season for the um, mainly like for uh, for Maryland, and uh, and then uh, have have some general overview of, uh, I mean, we can take question about general judging processes uh, and how judge uh, make decisions. So with that, I think uh, I give back uh, control to you, uh, Kim. Oh, that's great. Can everyone see the questions in the, um, the uh, Slido? Actually, yeah, I think, uh, so Heather will um, put online. Pop that up, okay, nice. Amazing. Okay. So I just quickly looked over at mine and it looks like we have one question's gotten five thumbs up. So looks like um, that would probably be a great place to start. And um, the question is, what are the common mistakes teams made from this season? Which of course is a great question. Everyone definitely wants to know that. Would you prefer that I pass it to a specific panelist or shall we ask panelists? I mean, do you have a preference on how we, how we tackle these? Does anybody have no? All right, well, go ahead. I think if people can jump in. Great, let's do it. Okay, so I'll start then. Thank um, the, you. The most common mistakes I think is teams not actually carefully looking at the award criteria 
and um, in the in the manuals. Now you get the game manual, of course, but you can also find the judge's manual on the internet, no problem, just by searching for it. And you can then find out exactly the methods that the judges are using to evaluate teams for these awards. And every award requires you to do something with an engineering notebook. So it's really to a team's advantage to make that notebook um, well-organized and accessible for the judges. If judges have to look at you know, 20, 30 notebooks in just a couple of hours, we're really gonna um, focus on the ones that are easiest to find what we need to find in there. And I also wanna point out that, that awards are not just about building robots. They're really about building teams and, and building future STEM professionals. So really look at the award categories and the criteria for them. Let me add also uh, some common mistakes that I've observed over the years is Related to what, what uh, my colleague mentioned, is about reading the, the manual, right? So you know, if you write the manual, you know that you have at least five minutes uh, to, to present. So uh, another common mistake is not preparing for that uh, presentations. You, you're not coming prepared. Uh, those of us that, that work in the field know if we have to give a presentation to a group of people, to our boss, to, to, to a client, we practice them several times. Uh, yet at the competitions, uh, FTC comes, we, we, we can tell when a, when a team walk in and they never practice their presentations. So do practice that, uh, do read the, the rule, read the manual, so you know what you can, cannot uh, do, uh, you know how to uh, prepare your engineering notebook, for example, uh, there's, this, uh, there's a limit on how many books you can uh, present to the judges, how thick the book's supposed to be, and, and there's all kind of different rules. So that, that's what uh, my take on the common mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to add on to that. I think the, um, the and especially this season in Maryland, uh, normally half of the judges are first-time judges. And uh, I saw the students sometime they assume the judges will know everything. You know, they, they, they're the expert, but actually they're probably just first time seeing a FTC game. So uh, it, will, it will be very beneficial that when team present their presentations, they want to present to somebody like that. So it's not about the technical details, about big pictures. You know, like I say, if, if you are thinking about your something innovate, what is the innovate things instead of talking about you know like the, the, what wheels do you use you know like, like common stuff that uh every team will will do so like like using that five minutes uh to to do something that impactful and gave the judges the impression that uh they have the information that they can use the judging criteria in the game manual to judge you Anyone else want to add to that? Um, yeah, I, I guess maybe this one also bleeds over into the next question. Okay. But um, judges want to see the students doing the work and students answering the questions and students doing the presentation and interacting with the judges. They don't, judges are really not interested in talking to mentors, but it's very important for your team to take advantage of your mentors. That's where their expertise is, and that's why some of the awards are looking to see that you've gone out into the engineering community and invited expertise into your team environment. So although uh, judges only wanna to talk to students and only wanna hear from students, they do wanna find out that students have made an effort to, to learn from experts in the field. That's a good point. So, so directly, let's go on to this next question. What makes uh, judges want to go talk to teams of the pits? Can we hear from somebody we haven't heard from? What, what's your take on that? So if, if, the teams, if there's teams that they're not familiar with the judging process, typically how it goes, every team will have a uh, interview in the morning uh, with a panel of judges. That panel will come back uh, to the judging room and nominate teams that they feel 
uh, exemplify or you know or worthy of of each award so those teams for sure get visited by the judges but um, I know as judge advisor I always encourage my judges to go out and also stop by and visit other teams I know when I've been a judge before I've taken the list out but I've also visited other teams and a lot of times when I come back at lunchtime, I've removed some of the nominations, um, but added others just by talking with them. So um, the judges come back to get more information from the teams, um, more award specific. And that's, that's why they come back to, to see you. Yeah, I think that that questions, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that it's giving the team a wrong idea. Okay. So, mm -hmm we're not selecting who, which team we want to go and visit talk again. So each judge panel receives an assignment of five or six teams to, to hear their presentations in the morning. And those are the same team that that same judge panel will go back and talk in the pit before lunch. So uh, if, if you don't hear back from us, then it usually means we, we get all the information we need from you. But uh, judges are usually asked to go and confirm what they're hearing during the presentations, interview team in the pits. So I um, just want to make sure that the teams are clear about that, is that there, there is no what makes you want to talk to teams in the pit. I mean, the, the, the judges are asked to talk to all the teams that they see that morning in the presentations. Mm. Makes sense. Absolutely. And it's certainly true that um, uh, judges are often dissatisfied. They don't have enough time to talk to all the people they want to talk to. We are given a task to do and really a very short amount of time to do it. So um, it's not a perfect world. Ideally, judges would spend much more time with every team, but that's, that's just impossible. Sounds good. Does anybody else want to add anything to the pits question before we move on? Uh, I one more thing do make sure you are available uh when the judge to stop by uh I've, i've what i really like the teams are doing this is that if the team's gonna be away from the from the pit you say they're, they're going on inspections or they're going on a match uh put a note on your pit area saying we are at the match right now or we are in inspections uh and maybe even tell us we'll be back by this time so the judges will know Otherwise, I've seen many cases where the judges have been trying to reach a team, but we don't know where the team is. We, 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 they're not playing in the game. They're, they're not in the pit. So the judges will try to stop by a couple of times. But uh, at the end, I mean, if we cannot find you, we, we will move on and start uh, talking to other teams. That's good advice. It's a good, Go ahead. good idea to always try to have it, leave at least one person, one student member, in the pits at all times so that the judges can come back and find someone to talk with. Yep, guilty. My team is guilty of that. So good advice. I hear you. Um, let's move on. Let's go to our next question. Um, and this, uh, thank you so much. Just popped it to the top. As a judge, what makes a notebook stand out? And I know I have had this question as well. So go for it. I want to hear all about notebooks. Um, I'd like to talk about that one. Um, <clears throat> so, well, first of all, as it was mentioned before, you're going to have judges, some that have no experience and some that have a lot of experience. And most of my judging has been as the think, for the Think Award. Um, and I find that the judges that don't really have any experience tend to look for notebooks that are pretty <laughs> and and they have you know an aesthetic they're aesthetically pleasing so yes your pictures and your graphics are important but you also have those judges that have done this for a long time and they're looking for math and science in there and you have to make sure you include you know all of that math and science that you do don't just assume that if you have um, if you've calculated something and you have it in there, that we can assume that because you got the answer, we know how you calculated it. Make sure you show us, show us that calculation that you did in order to get to that answer. We want to see that math or the science that you use in order to get there. So 
that's really important. And then also, if you're doing a reflection, make sure that it is an actual reflection, not just telling us what you're going to do next, but your actual thinking about the process of what went wrong or what went right and why that happened. Those things make the notebook stand out to someone who's been judging for a while. They're looking for those details. I, I want to say first impressions matter, right? Just like anything else. So that first impression is not everything. So having a nice cover or, or, or a really nice book certainly will help, but that's not the only thing. Uh, so the, the point I'm trying to say on with that one is that just make sure that your, your engineering notebook is presentable, right? Don't, don't, don't give us a stack of papers. Mm. I'm not saying anything does that, but if you give us a stack of papers, then that's already, uh, you can see how the judges will feel when you see that. But at the end of the day, it's the content that really matter. When you start looking at it, we look at the content. I cannot tell you how many times a judge will complain to me and say, I cannot find where things are in this book. Mm -hmm. So when you have an engineering notebook, I know you make an effort to put everything in there, but you need to stop and think, if I give this book to somebody who never seen this book before, how easy for that person to find something on that? You know how to look at that because you, you put that book together. You know where things are. But try to give that to somebody, uh, maybe your cousin, your, your, your uncle, your, your aunt. Tell them, take a look at this, can you find things in there? Right? The, somebody who never seen the book, see how fast they can find things in there. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, uh, an, an index or a tab, what, what, whatever you do to make it easy for us to find things in there. And, and make sure it includes the things it needs to include. Check the awards criteria. It'll tell you what has to be in there. It'll, it'll help if you actually label it with the same word, right? So one of the awards, for example, call for you need to have a business plan. It's nice to actually have a section you title business plan, right? And you can, you can name it anything else, but having it that, that name and it's, it's in the table of content, for example, make it easy for the judge to say, oh, I need to take a business plan. Right there it is. That's a business plan. Mm -hmm. And we have had several teams that were up for awards, but got eliminated off the list because they did not have the engineering requirements in for the award in their book that we could find. And, you know, we usually had two or three different judges that would look for that requirement. Uh, so it is very important that you label what it is and that you look back and find the requirement for each award and that you are uh, satisfying each, each of those requirements. And in addition, if it's the beginning of the season, your book shouldn't already be three inches. It, it, you know, it should be building as it goes. Um, and we've seen that. We've seen people come into a qualifier with a book already at maximum capacity. And, uh, and I'm not sure why that is. They're trying to fill that space. Um, and it, you know, it should be building as you go and a kind of a never ending journal as the season continues on. One more thing about engineering notebooks, and, and this is a, a problem more than just engineering notebooks, but sometimes there are multiple teams in an institution, like a school could have three FTC teams or some kind of other organization could have multiple teams. And, and the judges compare those notebooks and they wanna see what your team did, not what the big institution did. They wanna see what those particular students on that team have accomplished and learned and, and what their efforts were. So make sure your notebook is distinguishable from your, you know, brother and sister teams. Yes. Anything else about of, notebooks? I like to think of the notebook as um, being able to tell your story to the judges. And so what I look for, um, what I believe we as judges look for in the notebook is a beginning you usually you're going to be evaluating the game um also you're going to be drawing you know putting little drawings in there design drawings and evaluating them and slowly building the subsystems I, I like to think about the notebook too as think it's a think award and so what i what we we are looking for is your thinking can we see your thinking and and uh 
you know, as you approach, as you encounter problems in the engineering process, what are your thoughts? Where are you going? You know, so when it's, it's actually the writing that the kids write in there too. I look for charts, evaluating um, different systems or subsystems or calculations, photos, um, graphs. And in the beginning, I really think there's really supposed to be a lot of uh, engineering drawings and evaluating the game as far as like the points, what, like where you're going with, where you're going to go this season. So I think a good team kind of takes time to evaluate, not just jump in and build. So your notebook tells the story of your team and what they did first and what they did next and so on. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Awesome. Shall we move on? We have good five thumbs up here next. Um, question to the judges. Do props or photos, etc., shown during the judges' presentation make a difference? Good question. Yeah, so uh, I think the this question and the next question probably they're kind of related. Uh, and uh, I think what uh, is uh, would point out uh, before that the judge is really looking for information and make um, make nominations, nominations. To criteria. And so during the presentation, uh, I think if uh, they present like the uh, the information, like say for 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 example, like the innovation, if they say this feature is innovated. Uh, is, is innovative and then the judges will have a alert like that wow yeah there's this is something I need to look for innovative word and then they were looking for the uh, the information there mm -hmm. uh, so if they have that information but also if can supplement by a drawing or something like it's easy for them to understand uh, remember we only have like 10 minutes also like in the judging room so if you can make that point using the prop, and that would be good. But but if that um, if you're like not providing information according to the to the judging criteria, that's sort of like a waste of time. Mm. Right, right. You, you want like to whet the um, judge's appetite for the five awards. So you don't want to go into extreme detail, but if you have a chart or graph or or props to show what you're trying to communicate, you know, it's easy to just clarify what award you're talking about. Like this system is innovative because, or this design is effective because. The, I feel the, the graphics, as long as you've done a, a, a nice job highlighting your key points, graphics are always great because when the judges are talking to five different teams, you know, for five, 10, 15 minutes, they have just a few minutes in between till one team leaves and the next team comes in. It's very difficult to remember all the key points. So when you have a little something, um, your team picture, your team robot, that's really important just so the judges can connect you to, oh yeah, that's a team that, you know, wears red shirts or uh, that's the team with the, the cool looking minor hats or something. Um, something that the judges can, can connect you to. And a lot of times your, your, your handouts um, are something that, that can give them that link back to you. Or sometimes you can use that handout um, to give additional information that you can't you know, convey in that short five minutes. So um, don't overdo it. Um, I think quality is much better here than quantity. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. And the judges also want to see all the team members in that interview room and they want to see participation from everybody. Yeah, actually, that's, uh, that's what, uh, Jeff, I think the, that's what the, a common uh, issue that uh, I think raised up uh, this season. Like sometimes the team just send a few people into the judging room and then when the judges go to the pit and then they saw different people and that 
sort of gave a impression that they're not really working as a team. Uh, last thing I want to comment on that is really just uh, remember that the, the judges are seeing many different teams. Uh, usually our events anywhere from 18 to over 40 teams. So the judges, one panel of judges could see a lot of teams throughout the day. You want to stand out. You want to find ways. If you do a prop, you want to stand out. Uh, it's good when the judges say, oh, it's that, that, that team in this color or that team that has this thing. Uh, so have something that will, will stand up. So if you're going to have something during the presentation, make sure it's something that's going to differentiate you from uh, somebody else, uh, from other teams in the competition. Mm -hmm. And we noticed too, whether you're excited about what you're doing or you're just running through your lines, because mm -hmm. that really rings, rings in our minds and will remember you better. Good. All right, then sounds like we've got that one under control. So moving on, we have some more questions. What is the difference between FLL and FTC in terms of judging? That's a big okay, question. I'll, I'll grab that one and start with that one since I've had prepared teams for both and judge both. Um, with the first Lego League, uh, one big thing is, you know, you're preparing for three different judging events. You're preparing for your research, you're preparing for the technical, and you do some work and some practice with your core values. So you have three different judging presentations that you prepare for and can be very specific in those, those uh, presentations. Whereas with FTC, you have one judging session, but you have to roll all of that into that one five minute judging session. And that's pretty tough to do. It really is. You have to go into that judging session with some visuals or um, maybe a skit. Uh, put some humor into it. Judges are there to have fun too and have fun with you. So make it some fun with it. If you're talking about the innovative award, tell them you're talking about our innovative um, robot design and be specific. If you're you know, want to stress your um, outreach with Motivate, tell the judges, you know, this is what we've done for Motivate. Uh, so it's very clear and very specific. And in that way, when you have new judges on the panel, it helps them work through the rubrics and find the information. The other really big difference between First Lego League and FTC is First Lego League gives you some wonderful judges feedback through the rubrics. You get them back, you get to look over them with the kids, you get to talk through them, and you learn from that and move on. FTC, from the first level down, that's where it all comes from, first says you do not give any feedback at the FTC level. So that's, that's another big difference between FLL judging and FTC judging. Anyone want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think uh, I, I want to add uh, a little bit uh, is about the process is that the in the judging room that in the morning when people get judged, mm -hmm. uh, that, ju that uh, interview is about nomination. It's nominate, get your team nominated to a category. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, in the afternoon, probably after lunch, when the judges go to interview at the pit is trying to rank people in that category mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's like it's not like a, a fll like in the judging room is basically everything a five minutes and uh presentation and a five minutes interview kind of determine a, an award but ftc i think have a, a longer process so they so the pit interview uh, i think as someone uh, mentioned before like make yourself available is very important because they're going to uh, decide if you want to get a award or not. Yeah, makes sense. Should we keep going? OK, 
Okay, good. All right, moving on. Thank you. Um, so to the judges, what are the challenges for judging? This should be interesting. Okay, I'll dive in. Um, okay. One of the biggest challenges is there simply isn't enough time to really do it complete justice. Um, especially at a larger event, the judges just cannot see every team and interview them and, and um, watch them to the depth that they want to do. So, I, and I've actually had judges to say, I can't do this because I can't do it right because I don't have time to do it. But that's the way it is. It's a one day event. That's how much time you have. Another big problem judges having, and I, I talked about this earlier, is when you have multiple teams in the same institution trying to distinguish what that particular team has done instead of what the whole kind of umbrella organization has done. Another challenge for the judges is really determining exactly who on a team did what and to what extent. Um, so be prepared for judges to come out. When they come out and ask you questions as a team member, they expect you as a team members to be able to answer those questions. If you've truly built that robot and truly done the work, you've been on the outreach, you've organized the outreach, you've done the work, you should be able to answer their questions. Um, so, you know, we've had, we've had some judging sessions where, the, where we had two, three top teams for the Inspire Award, and there's been some teams been knocked out of that award because the, the, as the judges went around, they saw the coaches working on the robot or the coaches um, trying to answer questions in the pits and things. So, you know, coaches and mentors are wonderful people. They're there to help and guide you. But make sure the day of the competition, let those coaches take the back seat and you guys step up and, and shine that day. Because uh, that's, that's your day to, to put forward what, what you have done and what you have learned. And that's what the judges are there for, to find out what you've learned that season. Um, another challenge is in the initial 10 minutes or however long you get in the beginning, depending on where you're judging, um, you know, you nominate these teams for the awards. And so then we split up into different categories. And so now when you're in your category judging, for instance, if I'm judging the Think Award, I might be looking through these notebooks to decide whether they qualify for other awards. And I might see a notebook that I look at it and I say, why isn't this notebook up for the Think Award? And it's because maybe the, um, that initial judging group didn't really get a chance to look at that notebook thoroughly in the two minutes that it had to that team had to look at it so one of the challenges we face is that maybe the team doesn't present itself quite effectively for us to look at you for an award and maybe you really should be up for a certain award so that's one of our challenges is maybe you should be up for an award when you're not because of how effectively you can present yourself. So I've seen it with Think and I'm sure judges have seen it with other awards as well. One other challenge I think that well, we face, especially as some new judges come in, is the differentiation between the Connect and the Motivate Award. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so teams, when they organize their notebook, need to be clear with that. What, what work have you done in the connect area? And what work have you done in the motivate area? And you know, before you're writing your judging presentation, you might be gearing them also towards what your team strength is. But connect and motivate have uh, very slight differences and they have changed over the years too. Mm -hmm. So I, I think of connect more outside of first and motivate more being inside of first mm. but i've talked to lots of judges and her uh got different uh, got different um opinions too on that but that's always a tricky thing mm -hmm. but again if you go back to the judging manual 
-hmm. you know, and, and really read that manual and understand the, each of the awards. They, they're first is getting better at, at being more specific with those awards mm -hmm. and details. How do, how do you distinguish between those two? The connect and, and motivate. Mm -hmm. Connect, I usually tell my team, is connecting with engineers mm -hmm. and the STEM community, where the motivate is motivating others, like you said, to be get involved with first, whether it's mm -hmm. FLL Junior, FLL, FTC, FRC. Um, so, yeah, that's right now my basic quick understanding of it. I think that sounds, that's correct, yeah. Sounds good. All right. So let's move on. Um, interesting. We've kind of talked about this a little bit, but we'll ask, we'll answer it just because it's being asked specifically. Is it a bad sign if the judges do not talk to your team during pit judging? Yeah, I'll uh, answer quickly. I think the, uh, it depends. Um, I think the, this year I found out that um, the judges sometimes not go to every pit because it's, the time is too short. And uh, so um, sometimes it's still, uh, I think that uh, they can get information from uh, presentations and, uh, and especially notebooks. So um, I think for this year, not, not necessarily it is the case. And don't, don't hesitate when the judges are walking by to, um, you know, if you've got something important to say, say hello to them, invite them in, you know, to look at your robot or have something specific that you want to share with the judges when they come by because, um, the judges, they're always, always interested in, in talking with the students. But again, time is the biggest challenge. Like all, all of us have said, you know, trying to find a time to talk to every team and work with them. Yeah, and think judges don't necessarily go out and talk to the team. So you might be uh, being considered for an award and you might not get a panel of judges come to talk to you. I think it helped to, to explain how the judging works. So those of you are not familiar with that, we, we kind of cover a little bit, but let me kind of summarize the, the, the judge's day, right? So between eight and 10 o'clock usually before the opening ceremony, before the, the driver's meeting, mm -hmm. uh, the, the judges are split into panels and they interview teams in the judging room or uh, judging booth. Uh, that's when you get the 15 to 20 minutes time in front of the judges to, to, to make your presentations, okay? Uh, then there's opening ceremony, uh, and then the judges will go back out again until noon, usually to go and interview the same group of teams that they saw in the morning. Uh, then they have a lunch break to, to, to talk about nominations, and then after lunch, they go back out again, but this time they will then focus on just a specific award. So the, you will not be seeing the same judges in the morning and afternoon, for example. Uh, and in the afternoon, the, the, the specific judges panel will just be responsible for one award. Uh, if, if you are not up for that award, you will not gonna see the judge panel. If you're up for that award, you will see the judge panel. So what am I telling you this? It's the reason is because uh, if you have a, a strong presentation, so you have a good engineering notebook, uh, your morning judge may nominate you for a Think Award, as was mentioned before by Jocelyn. Uh, so if you get a nominate for Think Award, most likely than not, you're not gonna see another judges again throughout the day because your Think Award judge panel will just, will just spend time in the judging room uh, going through the, the engineering notebook. So Think Award judges will not be, be going out again. So it, it may not be a bad sign if you don't talk to you again anymore, but if, if you don't have a, good engineering notebook but it just don't talk to you again and that that could be uh although may, may not again may not necessarily be the case uh keep in mind too is that judges may be trying to find you but they cannot find you so just because you you feel like oh the judge is not looking not talking to me well did you make yourself available to judges uh, if you're never in your pit area for example then it could very well be that the judges have stopped by a few times in your pit and not able to find you so uh i, I would not look at you being talked to by the judge or not being a good or bad sign. I mean, this is 
the, the, the nature of the judging process. Sounds good. All right. So there we go. Let's move on. I, I actually am very eager to hear the answer to this myself. So is it bad to see teams distracted, such as being on their cell phones? My team needs to hear the answer to this question. I, I think absolutely. <laughs> actually, my team, uh, because of uh, one member using cell phone, we lost a big award. And... Uh, and they learned the lesson. Uh, they they were now used the cell phone. Uh, it, I think actually we we're trying to not use the cell phone at the competition. Uh, just lay not, that down as a rule. That's a, uh, actually the, there was a rule at the um, the field. If you bring the cell phone, because that may interference with these uh, the Wi-Fi signals. Yeah, that will be a penalty. But yeah. in the pit is a gray area. Uh, I think if if you know they see that you do something different, it's it's uh, it's it definitely is is not a good sign. <laughs> Let me take a different take on that. Uh, depends on the context of that too, right? So they cannot use Wi-Fi, and cell phone may be the only way of, of looking up information. Mm -hmm. So if I see a team huddling around one person's on a cell phone, and and I find out that what they're doing is looking something up, something important for the competition, yeah, and that's good. I see teamwork. I see team making an effort to try to, to find out something, right? But on the other hand, if I see a, a team working on a robot and one or two persons standing on the side, so uh, absorbed into playing games on their cell phone, that's not good, okay? So again, the context is important right here. But in terms of talking about distraction on, 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 on the pit, I, I think uh, we haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, to me, it, it's probably worse, uh, maybe the same, uh, is seeing a team not using the, the, your safety glasses. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the pit area and I'm walking around and I see a team working on their robot and worse, their safety glasses was on their hair, on the head, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so many people just put them up on, on their head and then keep working like that. Why do you have safety glasses if you don't wear them? So that, that's another thing too that I, uh, my, my biggest pet peeve and I'm walking around the pit area and see team or team members working on robot and not wearing safety glasses. And when a judge comes around to a pit, um, as a judge, I expect all the team members to be there and engaged in talking with the judge, whether or not they worked on the robot or whether or not they were involved in the outreach. I still expect all the team members to be there, present, engaged, and talking or listening with the judge and supporting the teammates. And I, a team should know that gracious professionalism is a, is a core value with first for every team, for everything. And we do check up on that. We talk to the refs, we talk to the scorekeepers and so forth. And we, um, we pay attention when we're in the pits, even if we're not standing in your pit, we are looking around. So grace of professionalism is, is a key item. And, I've seen teams that otherwise would have won awards get uh, blasted out of them because of some little incident. Wow. And I've had teams that have won awards based on referees or um, a lot of times even the cures. You'd be surprised how many of the cures have given me a lot of GP information. Um, you know, that, you know, I asked this team three times, they wouldn't come, they, they wouldn't listen to me. Um, so they've lost some awards over things like that. So yeah, as, as judge advisor, we're, we're out there, you know, talking to all of, all of the key volunteers and collecting that information. So the gracious professionalism is, is very important. That's a big hint for those of you attending this session here. Okay. So judges do ask other volunteers in there. So we don't just base on everything on what we heard in the judging panel or in the interview. Yeah. We go ask other volunteers, how is this team doing today? Uh, any comments about any teams? We ask that to all the volunteers. So, uh, and how, so how, you, how you act throughout the day that any volunteers can see can impact the judging. Anything else on that front? It was, I think, very, very helpful. It's so good for everybody to hear that. 
over and over again. Um, all right, awesome. So let's keep going. Um, interesting question. What's preferred, one or two notebooks? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, I see most of the, the top teams, they have two, two notebooks. One is for technical and the other is for outreach. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Um, it's it, it's nice when it's kind of split up that way. Um, and also back in the judging room, it works really well because sometimes the uh, the think award, uh, the think judges want to be looking through the notebook for their award, but then the other judges need to be looking at the notebooks too to see how things you know are stacking up for them as well. So that enables the judges to, uh, you know, several different judges to look at the notebooks at the same time. So that actually helps them out to have two notebooks also. Make sure you got that team number on the cover, on the spine. The more places you put it, the easier it is for us to find. And make sure it's clear that you, if you have two notebooks, make, make sure it's clear that it's one of, of two notebooks, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing worse than, than a, a judge looking at a notebook for thing award, for example, and saying, oh, there is nothing about connect or anything but motivate here. They didn't do anything, any outreach at all. Let's, let's disqualify this team. So mm -hmm. make sure the judges know you submitted two notebooks. Again, imagine in the judging room, we usually have anywhere from 30 to 80 books there in the, in the judging room. Uh, we have several tables we usually would put, put up for, for putting notebooks. And by, by the time uh, the final deliberations comes in, the, the books are all spread all over the room. Uh, it's may, if you have two books, it may not be together anymore. So make sure you make it clear that this is one of two notebooks. Good suggestion. And it's helpful too um, if both of your notebook covers are similar. Yes. Um, you know, with, with, team picture or the definitely the team number has to be on both but if they're similar it's easier to keep them together mm -hmm. makes good sense anything else we want to add into that or we'll move on mm. all right we'll move on um this is interesting so do judges give younger teams more awards if they score equally as well as an older team was there a weighting system, I guess, for age? Is that, I think that's what they're asking? Yeah, I think it's a good question, uh, but I don't think this is a judging criteria. So uh, I don't think the judge will consider that when they consider award. No, I, I agree. Judges don't care about that. And, and certainly um, the, the team number might hint at how old a team is, but it doesn't tell you how long any particular team members have been on that team. And the, the teams are weighted and judged based on what they have done in the past year. So it's, it's everybody's on the same playing field, you know, whether it's a rookie team or a veteran team, it's based on what they have accomplished in their, their past year season, uh, not what, you know, the veteran teams have done in the past 10 years. So, so everybody's on a pretty much same playing field. I think the only time I've ever heard, you know, the, the term rookie team come up in, in judging is when looking at the judges award. Uh, you know, if something, if, if a rookie team did something significant and they really weren't qualified for any of the other awards, then I think maybe, you know, the term rookie team may have come up in, in discussing them for a judges award. And that's the only time I think I've ever heard that. Yeah, to stress, I mean, we really, as judge, we follow the criteria for each judge, each judge award to the dot. So age is not there, so we will not be looking at the age uh, or how old or how young the teams are. Uh, so the judge's award is the only one that doesn't have strict criteria. So that's when uh, other considerations may play, uh, come into play. All right, awesome. Um, so let's keep going. Uh, any suggestions for small teams who are spending a lot of time in matches and scouting negotiating? 
Our team often misses judges or hurried in the pit. So we've come through this before, but let's go back and answer it one more time. As judges, I think we, we also go by the practice fields to find teams. Mm -hmm. So if you're not at your pit and you're at the practice field, that definitely shows that you're engaged and you are focused on the competition. And sometimes that's where we will find you, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to try to find you. Right, wherever you are, we, we try to find you. So I'm thinking right now uh, on the fly here to, to answer that questions. I think you want to have pictures of your team in your pit area, in the costume that you'll be wearing that day, right? So if you're wearing uh, really, uh, I don't know, stood out green color, for example, uh, then you want to make sure you, you, you have that. If you have a team mascot, or, or a, a unique hat that everybody's going to be wearing that day, have that in there. So as, as a judge stop by your pit and looking for you, it's easy for us to find where you are if you, are, if you dress differently and then your picture is on the pit. Uh, so many times I have to walk around the pit trying to uh, look for a team just based on the, the color, small, small number on, on, your, on your shirt, right? Oh, where is this team number such and such? I keep looking for people and, but if I know, oh, they're going to wear a, a, a dark green color or, or, or a pink shirt or, or they're wearing this, this really crazy hat, then it's easy for me to find that, that team. And it's surprising how many teams, all the teams have, a lot of teams have a team color and they have their team name on their shirt and sponsors, but very few teams have their team number on their shirt. And the judges, you know, do a lot of work by team numbers. So just as an advice out there, when you're designing your shirt next year, try to put that team number on your, on your shirt too. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing too is, I know we as a team, um, we get a lot of our parents involved in scouting mm -hmm. so that our team members are available for the drive team. And I'd rather have a team member in the pit to talk to the judges than sitting in the stands watching and scouting. Um, so we usually have a lead scouter in the stands, a team member that, uh, you know works with the parents but we always make sure we have at least one person other than a drive team at all times in the pits too great awesome all right next question uh what if a judge is from a team is he or she giving an advantage to their team by giving good scores on their performance so let me, yeah. as a senior judge advisor, let me give you the official answer to that, okay? Uh, there is, the first thing we do in the morning is to, to identify all conflict of interest. Mm. Any judge that has a conflict of interest with that team will have no say on that team. That, that person will not be interviewing that team in that morning rounds. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon rounds, that person will not be judged will not be considering any awards where that team is being considered. So uh, any team that won is not because they have a, a, a member of their team or a, a mentor in the judging room, no. Because if there's anybody have a conflict of interest, that, that person is excluded from any part of, of having a say for that team's uh, uh, nominations or considerations. Absolutely. And I would suggest that Coach, the coaches and mentors um, go attend and sign up to judge for an event that your team's not competing in because it's an excellent way not only to meet some wonderful judges and, and but it's a great network and you really do learn a lot of what the judges are, are looking for you know in the different teams you get to hear some wonderful team presentations it's just a great way to learn and go you know um, and, and to learn ideas to help support your team um, and other teams. So I highly recommend all mentors, you know, but it, I recommend again, going and judging at an event that your team's not competing in to eliminate that conflict of interest. And first right now has recommend that if you, if your team is competing that day, you're actually on the judges award uh, team. So that helps eliminate a lot of conflict of interest also. Yeah, one of our team's traditions is we always go out to a competition, usually early, it's November, December. Everyone from the team, we all volunteer. Um, 
some kids, you know, sometimes our mentors ref, um, some of some, we try to get the parents involved in judging or cueing or whatever, you know, whatever they're interested in, but we all go out together and um, attend the event like Arlene said, that our team, of course, is not competing in. And that gets their feet wet for all of our parents. And then, you know, I find that the next competition, they're signing up again, you know. We've had some at the end of our season they needed help with, and they're like, oh, sure, I'll help. Because they had the experience. It also helps the parents because then they understand what we as mentors are doing and, and you know, working with their kids to help them achieve. So I think the judging is just an all around um, good thing. Don't be afraid to get out there and try it. it it's open to all. It, it really helps your team. I mean, as a parent who judged, you know, I'm able to go back and, and look at the team and say, okay, here are some things that I learned while judging that maybe as a team, you might want to think about, you know, to incorporate in in what you do. And, and so when the parents go and judge and, and the team members go and judge at an event that they're not participating in, you know, they learn so many things about, um, about what goes on behind the scenes. So, um, you know, and then they can take those ideas back and kind of help the team just to improve. But, um, yeah, you just learn a lot by doing that. And and I also just kind of wanted to say that I've judged at events that my son participated in and my son did not participate in. But even though I judged at ones that my son participated in, I never once had the opportunity to judge him or have any idea how the team was doing throughout the entire day. So. Anything else there? How are we doing on time? Do are we at a hard stop at eight o'clock? What are I we? Think probably may, maybe we can uh, answer like two more questions. Two more and, questions? Uh, okay, good. I love it. Two yeah. more. Then the rest of questions that we can put into Google Doc and uh, we can answer offline. Ah, uh, got it. Got it. Good. All right. Um, so looking back over here, looks like we're getting a greeting here. So I'm going to jump down. Uh, what if you see a team chasing each other around? Do you tell them, you tell them to stop, but they continue. So what, what does that look like to a judge? Well, it doesn't look good to a judge, but yeah. this is really the, the only kind of thing where a judge is going to give a team advice if mm. there's a safety issue involved. Um, Otherwise, you know, uh, we, we already said this earlier, judges are not there to, to advise or coach or mentor teams. But if there's a, a safety concern, judges will step in. Mm. All right, anything else we wanna add to that? I think that pretty much wrap that one up. Um, this is an interesting question. Does a handwritten uh, stand out more than an electronic notebook? So any thoughts on handwritten versus digital? Yeah, so this question came up a lot. And uh, yeah. so on the, um, in the game manual, it's very clear. Uh, electronic notebook and handwritten book is the same. The judges will only look the content. I think the only time sure. it, may, it may matter is that if the judges cannot read your handwriting, right? right. Yeah, just so. make sure we can read it. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay, good, good, good. All right, then we get one more question. So maybe this is our last question and the rest will go into the uh, Google Doc. Um, whoops, I'm still reading. Uh, what is the balance? What should be the balance during the five minute between talking about construction of the robot and talking about the way the team functions or outreach? So those interviews are to generate nominations for the awards. So figure out what award your team is strongest in, most likely to win, and that's what I would highlight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the uh, I, I think the um, the reason I saw like first change the rule this year to limit it to five minutes uh, is yeah. to let the kids know five minutes actually is a lot of time. 
you know, they, you can talk everything uh, uh, that to uh, get you nominated for all the awards. And I think it's up to the team to decide how to utilize them, that, uh, that time. Yeah, makes sense. All right, great. Then shall we leave it there? And um, we wanted to talk about the feedback form. Yeah, it's in the chat box. Uh, and also I think probably in the email, we're gonna send a uh, follow up email. Okay. Uh, so, I wanted to uh, give a helpful hint on one of the awards. Great. Can I do that now? Yes, please. Sure. Yeah, it's on the Connect Award. I just wanted um, teams to just to know and think about with the Connect Award, um, I think it's very important for everyone on the team to know who did you connect with, what did you learn, and how will you apply this to your team or your robot? <laughs> To be able to answer all those questions um, very simply and easily when judges come and find you. You know, who did you connect with? What did you learn? And then also not just what did you learn by connecting with engineers to be able to apply, but how you're going to apply that. How you're going to apply that to your team, what you learned, or to your robot. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Anybody else have, you know, since we were answering questions, but what, what's the question they didn't ask you that you, what's that piece of advice? What's the gem of the night? And then mm -hmm. maybe we can sign off. Any gems? Participation in FIRST gives you a great big heads up uh, and a, a big advantage over those kids who didn't participate in FIRST down the road. And I think the key thing is for the team members to be excited to show the passion for what they're doing. That's what the judges remember. Those teams that are there having fun, you know, in the gracious professionalism and doing for others and helping others. So that's, that's really important. And I say document so I everything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I mean, I think that a lot of times I, I see teams lose track of why they, they do FTC, right? When you first join FTC, you, you don't do this to win awards. Mm -hmm. You do this because you want to learn robotics. Right. Right? Somewhere along the way, you, you forget and say, no, I want to win award. <laughs> the fact that your robot works, you compete it at a competition, you're able to build your robot, that's an accomplishment in itself already. So remember why you do this to, to begin mm -hmm. with. Yeah. And I think the, um, the one of the motivation that our team evolved with first is that uh, it provides a safe environment for team to fail. And a lot of time that is only filled in, uh, in the real world situation that you can learn. And that's, that's what the, our team experienced that they, they cried uh, after they lost the games. Uh, but also I think that this year like they qualified for world and then they cried for the success. So that's sort of the, the real uh, life experience and the, the life skills that we learn from this process. Yeah, sounds great. And I always tell my students too, I mean, they may not become engineers. Many may go into other in science other or science STEM fields. Field. But the skills that you learn, especially um, when you do interviews and talk with judges, are life skills that you'll need for your interviews, uh, you know, as you're applying for jobs in the future. And just being able to um, interact and talk with adults and students all, you know, I think it's a great program and it really, I mean, will help them in college a lot. I mean, there's a a lot of classes and projects that these skills come in handy with um, the skills learned in first. So yes, you're not just winning awards, you're working on your public speaking skills, right? Lifelong skill. <laughs> yes, right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Then I guess we will wrap it up, but please, please, please fill out the um, Google form uh, to just give feedback. Since this is a new platform to try to share information, we want to make sure that we're giving you what you want to hear. And then anything else we want to add? Anybody? Yeah, I think, I think we're all happy to answer questions down the road. Yeah, and also I think, uh, as uh, Kim said, uh, that this uh, is a, a first time we're trying out. 
And if anybody want to uh, contribute uh, to uh, talk about uh, various topics that uh, other teams may benefit, uh, please let, um, uh, let us know. I think we'll have a follow-up email for the instructor sign up. So please um, contribute to that as well. Okay, good. All right. And the Google form is down in the chat and then probably be out in an email too. So lots of places. Thank you, everyone. Have yeah. a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye now. Thank you. Bye -bye.